Hi. So in this video, we're going to finish the personality quiz project from the app development with Swift course that Apple provides. If you haven't followed along, be sure to check out part one and part two. So let's go over to our project. So far, we have seen that uh, we can populate the question with the questions and answers. But at this point, we don't have any way to get the answers from what the uh, user selects. So in order to do that, we need to track what the answers are that they have selected as they go through these questions. So let's go and add a variable. And we're going to put this up here at the top. And let's just go with, we're going to say var answers chosen. And it's going to be an array of answer, type answer, and equals an empty array. So we have an empty array. Let me just clean this up a little bit. And okay, so this way, when they select an answer, we can record what they've chosen. Next, we need to um, attach our buttons so that when you select a certain answer that it calls a method. So um, for example, uh, first, let's take a look at the single stack view buttons. So for each one of these buttons, we're going to call the same method. So if I select one of the buttons and I control click and drag, and let's put it down here. I like to put things, let's put it down here, right there. Now, at this point, um, where it's switched to action. So make sure that it identified as action. Then we want to change instead of an any type, we want the UI button type. And we're going to call this method. What are we calling this method? Single answer button pressed, and then choose connect. So now let's connect this same method so that all th all four of our buttons call the same method. The simplest way to do that, since we have everything kind of all in a jumbled here, is to click this and drag and drag it to each button. And notice when you mouse over that, it tells you which buttons have already got that selected. Okay, so now each one of those buttons will call this method. Now let's add the following code to uh, this method. So first we're going to get a list of the current answers. So we're going to say current answers equal questions. So we're calling the questions array and we're saying question index and then, whoops, sorry, uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm doing question index, tab, tab, closing square brace, dot answers. So this gives us the array of answers from the current question. Next, we're going to switch on the sender. Because it's a UI button, we can then test whether it's single button one. And from there, we're going to say answers chosen dot append current answers and then zero. Because we know single button one represents the, the first index in the array, which is zero. Okay, so now I want to copy this and paste it one, two, whoops. So one, two, three, four. So now I change this, remember? Two, three, four. And change our array to match accordingly. Two, three. Now in this instance, um, we do need a default because we're dealing with a potential that it's not a it's it's not an enum or anything like that. So there's not a preset number of objects that can do it. So we just have a, a break there. After we have they've chosen an answer, 
what uh, happens is we I, we append what they've chosen, what answer they gave to the answers chosen, and then we need to go on to the next question. So we're going to call a method called next question. All right now, this doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and create it. Funk next question. So we'll update that here in a minute, but once we have the uh, single answer button pressed, then we also want to identify when the multiple stack view, when it's um, submit answer, remember over here, we have our submit answer button. When that gets pressed, we need to call a button, call a method that uh, handles the multiple stack view. So press control, click and drag, and let's just put this right here. And the action, uh, we're just gonna say multiple, the title is gonna be multiple answer button pressed. And we'll just keep it like that. Arguments, we can say none, because we, we're not responding to anything of what called the method because we don't, we, there's only one button that we're listening for. So we don't need any arguments. So go ahead and choose, choose connect. Let's give ourselves a little space. Okay. Now in the other video, I may have said, oh, we don't have to add outlets for the switches because I was just following along in the book. And I, of course, didn't get to this part, which now says add outlets for your switches. So um, yeah, let's do that. So what we're up against is we have four outlets. We have four switches. So go ahead and on the first switch, uh, let me get my code in line. We're just gonna add them up here. And under this one, let's just put it right here. And we're gonna call this multi switch one. Gives ourselves, give ourselves a little space because I wanna put the rest of them right here. And so we go to this next switch and I click drag multi switch two. Multi switch three. Finally, multi switch four. So the reason we're doing this is because we need to know what the state of the UI switch is. And since we have four of them, when they press the submit answer button, we take the state of those buttons and that becomes the answer that they selected, right? So if the switch is on or off, then we know that that was the question they selected if it's on. So the code for that, let's go down to multiple answer button pressed. Again, we're gonna get a reference to our answer array. So we're gonna say let current answer in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Press Control C and press Control V, Command V, sorry, on a Mac. Then we're going to say if multi switch one dot is on, that's the property we listen for when something is on, then we say answers chosen dot append, and then we say current answers, and I'm just tabbing quickly, sorry. There, so that handles that. So now I can copy this a few times. So go ahead and Command C, Command V, Command V, Command V, change our numbers, two, three, four, and one, Two, and I'm using the down arrow, three. Okay, very good. Now, after that happens, then of course, we also need to say next question. 
So the final one is the ranged uh, stack view. And so we have a submit button here. And if we control drag to a submit button, and then we want an action, and we're going to call this, what are we calling this? Ranged answer button pressed. And the arguments here are also set to none. Okay. Guess what happens? First, you get a reference to the answers array of that current question. Very good. Then we need to create the, uh, identify the range, and we're going to calculate that based on the uh, ranged slider. Now, the slider we don't have a reference to yet. So the horizontal slider, let's get a reference to that. So scroll up to the top and uh, give ourselves a little space right here. And I want to press control, click and drag and create an outlet. And we're going to call this ranged slider. Connect it there. So now we have the slider and we can get the value from that. So to get that, we say let index equal, and we're going to do some things here. Let's just follow along int and then an open parenthesis round and we're rounding up the ranged range ranged slider there we go dot value times and then a float current answers dot count minus one and that gives us Make sure we got all our all our parentheses. Int round range slider dot value times float current answers dot count minus one. Let me give myself a little more space. Uh, we're missing something. Hold on, hold on. Someone's yelling it at me. I can hear it. I'm just reading from the book. Round ranged slider dot value times float current answers dot count minus one what are we missing okay do we have too many if all else fails Start deleting parentheses <laughs> or start adding them. Okay, let's take a look at this. So we have our first one. That's our first one. That's our second one. That's our third one. Okay, here's, here's the problem. It didn't like that I didn't have a space. I didn't have a space here and so it saw that as a different value. It didn't see that as an operation. It didn't see it as a minus. It saw it as a as a negative number. So sorry, I should have added space. My mistake. I won't let it happen again. Okay. Now from there, um, once we have calculated it. So remember, we're using the current answers dot count as part of the range um, value. So we know which answer which um remember we set the range at the beginning here and we have the progress view for the questions so now um we will save this as answers chosen dot append and it's going to be current answers and then index the index becomes an integer based on where the slider is. So if the slider is closer to zero, then it's going to be a one or a two. If it's closer to four, and the reason we know that is we take the current answer count, 
minus one so that it's never more than uh, four because it needs the index is always zero based, right? Again, the, the, this zero based arrays will come back to haunt you if you don't understand and remember that the index starts at zero. So the count says there are four answers to choose from, but there is no index number four. There is index number three, two, one, and zero. So in order for this to work properly, you say count minus one, which gives us an index value, not just a count. Count is a number of items, but an index is a reference to that part of the array. That's why we use minus one or we use plus one when we're using it as text, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Then we times that by the slider value and then what that does is it gives us a decimal and then we round that to the closest integer and that tells us the answer. It's just kind of a, it's not a real scientific way of doing it, but it's just a way to, you know, okay, if it was closer to one side or the other, then it changes the value. Okay, so after we save the, val the answer, then we say next question. Okay, it's time to update the next question uh, method. So when we call next question, we need to increment the question index and we say plus equals one. Then we say if question index is less than questions dot count, then we update UI else we perform segue, segue with identifier, which is results segue, and the sender will be nil. Okay, at this point, what we do is we increment the question index, then we call update UI again, which changes the question type because the index has changed, and then loads it. If there are no more questions, then we go, we call the results segue, which takes us to, make sure that's a G, results segue, which takes us to the end screen, okay? Let's go ahead and run this and see where we're at. Okay, let's begin. Uh, which food do you like the most? I like corn. Uh, which activities do you enjoy? Well, uh, not so much. I do like cuddling. I do like, I like those. Um, and then we'll submit an answer. Uh, how much do you enjoy c uh, car rides? Well, there's a problem there. We gotta, we gotta fix that. And let's submit an answer. And there we are. So we've got a few things we gotta clean up. So with that, yeah. And there's a bug. Okay, lots of bugs. So we're not done yet. Let's go back to where we were. Okay. First things first, let's go to our question progress. No, what is it? Ranged slider. Uh, let's fix that. I think I missed a step. Let's, let's go in and fix that. So with the, let's hide the other uh, stack views. Remember how to do that. We click installed to uncheck it. So we go to the multiple and we click installed and we uncheck that. Now I can see my range slider. What I need to do here, let's first of all, let's check. Okay, notice the alignment. This is, this is the problem. So I select my range stack view and I go to my alignment and it needs to be set to fill fill, distribution fill spacing. Okay, so that was an oversight. Glad you caught it. Thank you for telling me. Okay, so now that should fix the problem we had with the arrangement, the slider not showing. Okay, let's go back and enable, put, click installed for these other ones. And that fixes that bug. Okay, now the multiple stack, multiple answer stack, all of the UI buttons, uh, the switcher, UI switch buttons were toggled on. We don't want that. We need to uh, 
fix that so that every time you start a question, whether it's the uh, multiple stack or the range stack, the answers need to be um, reset every time. All right, let's go up to the mult update multiple stack and let's change a few things. We need to set each switch. Multi switch one dot is on equals false. So let's do that a few times. So I copy, paste, 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 change the numbers to three and four. So that sets it here properly. Now uh, we can update the range stack and let's go here and say ranged slider dot set value and we're going to say 0 0.5 and animated is false. So we're just kind of set it in the middle so it has a default. So we need to next prepare the results view to handle the data that we send it. So uh, if I go to my re results view controller um, class and here we need to give ourselves a property that's going to receive the answers and we're going to call this var responses response oh come on responses which take which is a, a type of answer array of answer and we do the exclamation point because it's possible that this could be nil when this initializes. So it, we, it's, we want to handle that, that it's okay for this to be off empty when it's initialized. Next, we need to update um, the process when we call the uh, segue, perform segue, we need to pass data to the results view controller. So we'll, let's go back to the question view controller and in here, um, there's a, there's a method we're going to override. So when you call perform segue, there is a method called prepare for segue, prepare segue that we can override in order to pass data. So we're going to say override is the keyword and its function is prepare. And it's this one right here that says prepare for segue. So at this point, what we're doing is we're saying whenever a segue is called, I want to do something before it actually happens. I want to prepare it. In order to make sure we are only handling the correct segue, your, your code could have multiple segues. You could have multiple segues in a UI view controller. So you need to know which one you're calling and you want to make sure it's the right one. So we check, we say if Seg segue dot identifier is equal to so two equals quote results segue then we're going to say we're going to get a reference to the results view controller and we're going to set the answers on the results uh, the responses property so to do that we say let results view controller equal segue dot destination. So this gives us, and then we say as, whoops, as, and then an exclamation point, results view controller. Then, so this gives us a reference to the results view controller. Then we say results, and we want this second one, dot responses equal answers chosen. See how that goes? Okay. So what we've done is when the perform segue is called, there's a method that we are overriding called prepare for segue. We then get a reference to um, the results view controller. We want to make sure is the segue that is preparing the one that we want, which is results segue. Then we cast a variable called results view controller as a type of results view controller. And then we say here, the responses are now 
we assign answers chosen to the responses property of this view controller. Let's go to our results view controller and let's have a method to calculate the answer or the personality. So we're going to calculate the personality as part of the results. So in our super in our uh, view did load method, let's call this calculate personality results. And then we're going to create the method function calculate personality. I'm, I'm being careful to spell this correctly. Now we need to determine the frequency of the animal that was selected or the animal that ca was calculated to come up with the final result. So we're going to create a variable called var frequency of answers and it's an animal animal type which is an int and what this does is we're creating a variable and it's currently we're initializing it we don't know what it is yet so we're setting this up as an empty animal type so the answer struct has a bunch of information. We only care about the type. So we can simplify the answer struct by doing the following. We can say let response types equal responses dot map. And then we're going to pass in, we're going to say dollar sign zero dot type, which means we only want everything that matches to the type. We don't care about all the other information in the animal item. So now we need to iterate through the responses in order to calculate this. And so we're going to say for response in response types. So that one right there, we're going to say frequency of answers and then response equals and then we're going to say frequency of answers response notice the two question marks and then zero plus one what this is doing is it's checking if it's saying if this exists, if the response exists, then we increment it by one. If it doesn't exist, if this frequency of answers response doesn't exist, then it adds it. So with this dictionary of frequent, frequency of answers, this dictionary, now we know how many of each answer was given. We can determine which has the most frequent answers. And the way we do that is by using a sorted method that places in an each key value pair into an array, sorting the value properties in descending order. So to do that, we will create a variable let frequently frequent answers sorted. So we're sorting the dictionary based on how many uh, each value had. So if, if more answers were dog or more were cat, it's going to list them in that order. So frequent answers sorted equals frequency of answers dot sorted. And then we're going to use by and we're going to create um, the following. We're going to say start with pair one pair two. This is a method that gets called boolean in and then we say return pair one dot value is greater than pair two dot value. So let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, once we have this sorted, then we say let 
most common answer equal frequent answers sorted dot first dot key. The book has a much better explanation of how this works, but the idea is that we're passing in two values at a time from this dictionary, and it's saying if value one is greater than value two, then return true, and then it, it knows to sort by that, oh, this one that I passed in is now um, higher than the one before it, and so it's going back and forth and it's sorting through all of that. Again, the book has a good explanation, has it a little easier to explain. Let's go back to our main storyboard and we need to update the labels. So we don't have a reference to these labels yet. So let's go back here and let's, let's get this working. So what I did is I switched to automatic. And now because I selected this UIV controller, now we're in the right uh, Swift file for this. So um, let's click and drag and create some outlets for these. So we're gonna put this up here and we're gonna call this result answer label. And then for this next one, we're gonna control click and drag and we're gonna call this result definition label. Whoops, what happened? It didn't like it. I think I, let me give myself some space. Let's try this again. So I'm clicking, holding control, click and drag. And there we go. And we're gonna say result definition label. Now we can update the personality result and provide the answer. So let's say result answer label dot text equals quote you are a and then we're gonna it's gonna be most most common answer dot raw value and then an exclamation point because that's what we're so excited about the answer and then the result definition label dot text equals most common answer dot definition. Okay, let's build and see how it goes. Okay, let's take our quiz. Which food do you like most? Uh, we'll go steak and then notice we've updated these so that works better. So I like sleeping and I like eating. We're gonna submit an answer. Oh, look, that's working too. So how much do you like enjoy car rides? Uh, I like them, I like them quite a bit. Submit an answer, oh, I'm a dog. You're incredibly outgoing, you surround yourself with the people you love and enjoy activities with your friends. Well, there you have it. I guess it's true. Okay, now we have a done button, but it's not uh, working. So let's go ahead and fix that. Go ahead and choose stop. You also notice that there was a back button showing on that uh, particular view, and it said back to question number three. We don't want that behavior, so we wanna hide that button. So in order to do that, in the view did load, uh, we can add a, meth, uh, a uh, property. We can say navigation, navigation item dot hides back button. Okay, hides back button equals true. So that'll solve that. Next, um, in order to get the back button to go to the view that we want, we need to do the following uh, to our introduction view controller. So let's go back and let's just click over here and choose our uh, introduction view controller and we're gonna create a function. It's gonna be, we're gonna call this, it's gonna be an IB action function, and it's gonna be called unwind to quiz introduction. And it's gonna receive a segue 
UI storyboard segue. Um, since nothing changes when we go back, we will just uh, we don't have to worry about any information in this method. Okay. Let's go to the storyboard. Let's save this. I want to press Command S to save this. Let's go back to our storyboard. So now I'm going to control drag from our done button to this exit uh, object here. So if I press control and I click and I drag and I let go, whoops, control drag, let go, then I get the unwind method. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and see how we did. So let's take the quiz. Uh, I like carrots. I like sleeping. And I don't like car rides. Hey, I'm a cat. Who would have thought? Uh, the back button's hidden, which is right. And then if I click done, there we are. We're back to our quiz. Awesome. Good job. So that was everything in this um, project. Be sure to take a look at the book. There's some additional things you could do. There's lots of um, things you could do to enhance this and make it a little more interesting. Hopefully that was helpful. And uh, I appreciate you watching the videos. Please be sure to subscribe and check out the next videos. And I'll see you soon. I'm going to see you soon. But not in a threatening way. More, more like a, a new video coming soon way.